Every woman, every man, join the gospel car of Sunday school things. Come on. As you know, on these walks, usually I go and look for canals. So the River Severn is about 100 metres away, and just over there, apparently, there's the tiniest canal in the whole world. So I want to go and look at that. Come on, Mabel. Come on, Mabel. Why well, going to you? Come on. Calm down. Oh, get excited. <laughs> We've been staying at uh, Puddle Duck Cottages for a couple of nights and so we've been looking at the river every day and it started off when we first got here it was really high, really running fast. And it's interesting every day we come on this bridge and have a look and it's dropped just a little bit. It's probably dropped about half a metre bit over that in the last couple of days but it still looks like the sort of thing you would not want to swim in. I haven't seen a single canoeist or boat or <laughs> nothing on this river and I don't blame them. One more thing. We come on this bridge every day and it's quite busy, there's quite a lot of people. And it's a solid metal bridge. But you notice when you're walking along, with just two more people on, so Mabel and me and a couple more people, it starts to bounce. <laughs> and you think, oh no, I'm gonna fall in. Yeah, very odd. Anyway, onward. So here we are. I did say I was going to cross the river and come and look at the tiniest canal in the world. Well, it's the tiniest canal I've ever seen. Uh, and this is the end of the canal. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk all the way along the canal to the beginning of the canal. So if you care to join me, buckle in and prepare for a very, very short ride. Come on, Mabel. And here we are at the beginning of the canal, just there. Question is, why would anyone build such a tiny canal? Luckily, there's a sign there, so I want to go and read it and find out. So I've just read the sign, <laughs> so I've roughly worked it out. All around me, there are old buildings, and they used to be a pottery works. So the river is just there, literally 50 metres away. Stuff used to come up the river and then they would make it, turn it into pottery uh, and tiles and stuff here and then some of it would go back out along the river and some of it would be put onto boats here to be taken along this tiny stretch of canal um, to a wonderful invention which I'll go and look at in a minute. Come on! Go on, come see that no, no, to the dog. Go down to the dog. I'm back at the end of the canal, and the reason it ends after such a teeny tiny journey is because of that thing over there. There is a railway that goes into the water. It's crazy. Let's go and explore, find out what's going on. The way it worked was simple. You had the factory just over there where they made <clears throat> they're the, they're the kilns and they fired the stuff and they made pottery things, plates, I don't know what, tiles, that sort of thing. They put them on little boats little sort of long boats that were square and they were called tubs, like a margarine tub, I guess. And they went along the canal <laughs> for about 30 seconds and then they came here. And then there were little carriages in the water. And so the little carriages, the boats would float onto the carriage and then they get pulled up the incline all the way to the top where there's a real canal, the Shropshire, I think it's the Shropshire Canal. So they go up there to the real canal and then they could get taken to lots of different places. So that's why there's a tiny canal and this weird railway, as I said, that goes all the way into the water. You can see the tracks going all the way in. It's fascinating. Mabel, you look guilty. What have you been doing? You're not allowed to walk up the incline, <laughs> sadly. I would have tried, but it, the fence was too high. But there it is. There's the incline going up over there, the Great Hay Incline. And we're now going to walk up these stairs beside it and see what's at the top. Come, Maybelline. What have you been up to? I'll race you to the top. Actually, no, I won't, because you'll win. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh. We had a race up the stairs and Mabel won. 
So now I've got to find a coffee shop and get her a treat. Great. Good girl. <laughs> oh. So we reached the top of the incline. And then, because I don't do research, we got hideously lost. And we've just spent 10 minutes struggling through a boggy morass. It's horrible. But luckily, someone's found us, given us a bridge so we can cross over. Anyway, we're now going to head back and look at the top of the incline and see what's going on. Come on, Mabel, you mucky pup. This way. So in case you're a bit confused, the incline, at the top of the incline, is just behind up there somewhere. And this is the, the canal that it joined, the Shropshire something or other canal. But as you can see, it's no longer in water. It's no longer being used. So it's not the prettiest place to be. But uh, I do find it interesting. I find the whole thing very fascinating. And I look forward to seeing more in a minute. Let's go. A sign. There's always a sign, which is fantastic. Mabel, stay. Go on, go back. Good girl. I'm standing at the very top of the incline. Below me, I can see the bridge where I was uh, standing earlier and the little tiny, teeny canal at the bottom. So the tub boats would come all the way up here. They would go over the top and into the canal at the top, which is now dry and it's not being used. But the most exciting thing I thought, so they used to have a steam engine doing, uh, pulling the boats up. But before the steam engine, they had men. And I read somewhere that they had loads of men and they were literally paid just to pull boats up the hill. And the reason they got rid of them and replaced them with a steam engine was that the locals complained they were not a nice sort of fellow. <laughs> Something's never changed, do they? Ooh. So the tub boats would come down here, and this would be underwater. This would be the canal. This bit here is the old canal, which is no longer wet. I hope it's not wet, anyway. No, it's dry. Perfect. One minute, we're walking along that sort of muddy, boggy canal with no water in it. And next minute, there's water in it. I'll be honest, I didn't see it happening, but suddenly we're back with a normal canal with water and if you look up there, apparently we've walked into a place called Blist Hill, Victorian town. And we were just looking down at it, and there are people wandering around in Victorian outfits, so who knows what's going on. We're actually gonna, we will go and look around it, and if they let us, we'll do some filming. The main thing is, I've promised Mabel a treat in a cafe, so I've just got to hope they've got a cafe down there. Oh, she's, she's not waiting for me. <laughs> Mabel, I'm coming! I don't know if you can read that. It says gospel car and Sunday school. So you can do that whole, every woman, every man, join the gospel car of Sunday school things. So probably people were singing in here for a while. This very nice man says he's going to get the steam engine working for us. Sadly, although the Victorian town was very nice, the cafe was closed. <sighs> so it means we've got to go all the way back down to the bottom. But luckily, there's a really nice tunnel and a really nice path that takes us... I don't really know where it takes us, but it takes us back down somewhere. Mabel, come on! Come on! Come on! Woo! 
So we finished our walk. We found a fantastic cafe. It's a YHA hostel as well. So we found this lovely cafe. It's empty, the only people here. The lovely lady gave Mabel some biscuits. I had a very nice coffee. And now the sun has come out. What a great way to end the day. Hope you enjoyed the walk. I know I did. And Mabel is exhausted. Sweet dreams, Mabel.